Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine uh, tutorial. Today we're taking a bit of a trip down memory lane a little bit and revisiting the Toon Shader that I made uh, a couple years back and having a little look there. David Lancaster dropped by my Discord server and uh, the issue that he had with the original Toon Shader was that it was only good for two tone. It was just a straight up light dark zone and he wanted three tone Toon Shading. And uh, he was gracious enough to uh, share his result and I thought we would go through it here today. Uh, the first thing that I think we'll do, uh, we'll put in something in the scene to look at. So if you have this mannequin folder, which you should, if you have any of the, um, you know, any of the built-in tutorial um, content packs. So if you don't, just hit Add New here. Go to Add Feature or Content Pack, and add any one of the uh, the, the content packs here, or the blueprint features rather. Uh, third person in particular definitely has it. So does uh, uh, the top down has the mannequin included. So just grab that guy, and then we can grab this third person idol, and I'll just drop him into the scene. Yeah, all right, that's a little mannequin. It's looking pretty happy. The next thing we'll do, uh, I'll hop over to my world outliner over here and find our post process volume. Head back over to details and scroll down to find in rendering features our post process materials. This will be an array of materials. So we'll go ahead and add one just now. And let's grab, let's grab our outline material. So this is PP outline instance from um, the original Toon Shader video. So that's unchanged. In fact, we'll open it up here. We'll make a real quick modification. So this is the material, the final version of it. Up the end here, we have this custom depth mask. Let's just skip that altogether. So from this if node, just drag this over to a missing color, hit save, and we are right to go. So we'll close that down. Now we see everything has this uh, this outline on it, and we can further tweak these values if you want to match what I've got here. It's all just one, except for the depth line bias and the normal line bias, which I've set up to 100. It gives us these nice even lines. Okay, with that done, we can uh, head back over. Where's my materials folder? Here we go. Uh, we can go ahead and start building out our materials. So just right click here in the content browser and go to material and make ourselves a new one. I called this three tone tune underscore PP for post process. And then we'll open it up. So the first thing we'll do here in our material is uh, grab our main node here or with nothing selected. So we have our uh, material details down here. We'll change a material domain to post process. And we'll also scroll down here fairly far to uh, blendable location. And we'll set this to before tone mapping. Otherwise our, uh, our material isn't going to display properly. So that's blacked out our uh, preview window here because there's nothing played into a mess of color. But if we right click here and find a scene texture node like that, and then set our scene texture ID to post process input zero, and then plug our color into emissive, we'll see that we get our scene back. So when we're dealing with post-processing materials, the uh, scene texture, as referenced by this node, is the actual image, like the, the I mean, it, it's 3D graphics, but it's a 2D image, like the, the UVs of your screen, the actual final result of the computed frame. So that's what it is that we're going to be affecting here with our, with our lighting. And uh, just for a little bit of sport, uh, we can check out any one of these things, for example, depth, Probably won't see much here in the preview window, but we can also look at, let's say, base color, and we'll get just the color information of the scene. And uh, any more of these, for example, opacity, we should just see nothing, because there's nothing uh, nothing uh, transparent. Uh, the world normal, so we can see the direction that the normals are pointing of our little preview sphere here. And there's uh, there's obviously plenty more here that we can, uh, we can take and we can have a look at, but for the purposes of our tutorial, we'll just leave this one at post process input zero. And we'll disconnect this for the time being and move them over here for a bit more space. I'm gonna use control W to duplicate this node and we wanna set this one uh, to our base color, a base color for lighting. And at any point, we can also right click our nodes and hit start previewing and we'll see what it is that we're dealing with. So we'll stop previewing that and go ahead and start building up our masks that we'll use for our uh, three tone shading. So the first thing we'll do is come out of these color uh, outputs here into a desaturation. We'll just uh, reduce our scene here just to the uh, black and white values, just to our grayscale values, and then divide them from one another like that. And we'll start to be building up our uh, our texture mask. And following this, we can just clamp, clamp our values from zero to one just for safety. And I think, I'm not sure because my previous scene might be broken here, but it seems we're still looking at uh, base color. But if I rack this and start previewing, yeah, I think I need to reinstall the engine, actually. This, uh, this kind of thing's been happening more and more. But when I'm dealing with post-processing anyway, I don't really like to rely on the preview scene up here in the top left. For that reason, we can just go over here and plug it into a missive. Then we can save it. And then over here in our um, 
in our editor, if we make ourselves a new post process material, set it to an asset, then we can drag our material over here and we can see what it is that we've got here. So what it is that we're looking at. So this is the uh, the color and our basic post process input desaturated and divided from one another before clamping to zero and one. So we see we get some nice uh, some nice uh, nice shading here. So back in our material from our clamp here, uh, we'll actually give us a little bit more room here. We'll uh, split up our light here. So the basic uh, the basic sort of explanation to how this material is going to work is it's going to be using the regular post process input, our regular scene texture as the lightest shade uh, of our scene. And then we'll have a uh, sort of a shadow and then a much darker shadow and that will provide us with our three tone lighting. And it'll all be applied sort of over the top of the, of the scene so that we can still use specular maps and we can still get nice and nice shine and, uh, and, and have that sort of level of control. So let's come out of our clamp here into an if node. We'll get an if. Uh, we actually want our clamp here to be in B. So what an if node does, uh, if, you, if you don't have any uh, background in programming, is that an if node is going to take in two values, A and B, and provide an output based on whether, for example, A is greater than B, A equals B, or A is less than B. So we make comparisons between uh, anything we plug into A and B here. And what we want to plug into our A value is if we duplicate our post-process input zero node, hold an M and click for a multiply, and then we hold an S and click for a scalar parameter, we call this one light intensity. So we're multiplying our uh, post-process input here by a value. And it's going to sort of ramp up the contrast. Uh, actually, we'll set this something lower, uh, 0 0.5. So we can connect these guys together. We'll also want another scalar parameter. So holding S and click, this will be our light threshold. So it's how much uh, sort of creep we want the shadows to have. Like how, how much of the given shot is going to be uh, taken up by, you know, by by our shading. So that's that's going to control that threshold there. We'll type in a default value of about zero point six. Plug this into our A value. Our B value will be this clamp. If A is greater than B, then we want to use this darker, this darker shade of the, uh, of the scene. So if you want to visualize this, what we have here is our um, our shading model, which uh, we saw a little earlier and our threshold here. So if A, which is any value that's going to be uh, 0 0.6 is greater, if our <laughs> threshold here is greater than any value coming out of this clamp, then it's going to apply this. And if not, then we'll just use our regular uh, post-process input. Or rather, we'll just hold in one and click to get a constant and just set A less than, less than B to zero. So we're not going to need it at all. And then we'll grab all of this here, Control W to duplicate this little tree of nodes. And we'll uh, swap some values around here because we need to do sort of the, the inverse of uh, what we did with our light shades. So coming over our clamp here, we want our clamp to plug into A. We want our threshold here to be plugged into B. And we want the result of this multiply node to go into A less than B. And likewise with our constant, move that to A is greater than B. And we'll uh, change these names too because we don't want the same scalar to be affecting both sides of this. So this will be our shadow threshold and then our shadow there we go, shadow intensity. All right, we can save that out. Um, I'll drop some of these values down just for the preview. Threshold here is 0.3, but we will adjust these in our uh, final material. So it's looking pretty good so far, looking pretty good. Let's come out of this if here into an add because we want to add the results of both of these ifs together. And we can stop here and plug this into a missive save this out, we can have a look at what this looks like as is. Which, as you can see, is pretty wild, uh, not very useful to us, but if we right click our material here, make an instance, and then drop our instance over here where we had our three-tone uh, base material, then come back over here and open it up. Uh, let's set some values over here, we'll see what we can do with it at this point. So, I think the values that David used was 0 0.57, 0 0.8 minus 0 0.3 and 0 0.5. So it's still not looking that useful to us, but we do have a little bit more to build out in our scene. So I'm just going to drag this out the way, head back to our material and finish this thing off. So now that we've added the result of these two ifs together, uh, we can use this as part of our final mask and our regular post-process input to balance the scene back out. So hold an L and click to get yourself a lap. Plug in the result of this add into B. Post present input zero will be A. And if we come out of this add again into a seal and plug it into alpha, 
we should be good to go. So I know I breezed over that, so we'll sort of come back to it and, uh, and have a little bit more of a chat about uh, what exactly is happening here in this last step. So what we're doing first is using these if nodes to check whether the incoming light is higher or lower than a particular threshold, our light threshold, than our shadow threshold. And once we add them together, we can extract this uh, ceiling value, which gives us a nice uh, black and white mask of where to apply our, uh, our uh, effect to. And uh, lerp it back through uh, this, uh, this post-process input zero, because any unaffected region, uh, or any region unaffected by these if nodes is just going to return the regular scene. And then we can adjust the lightness or the darkness of the scene uh, based on these intensity scalars and how expansive the effect is based on our threshold uh, values. So if we save that, or actually let's plug in this seal. We'll plug in the seal and have a look at how this is affecting the, uh, the scene. So we go back and we can see our proper black and white mask that we're using. And uh, if, as you can see in the, uh, the black areas are going to be unaffected by our, um, our effect, because uh, we're using our lerp node over here uh, to cull all that out. So we'll plug this back into emissive, hit save on that. And then we will hop back into our uh, scene here and we can see straight away uh, the effect with David's values is quite striking. And uh, so we'll have a little play with our instance here. I'll drag this back over. So with our uh, values here, say so we can make our light shade much lighter. Uh, we can make our shadow intensity much lighter also, or much darker if we wanted it to. Any value lower than a certain threshold is always going to cancel itself out, and higher than a certain value is going to invert the effect. So depending on what you want to do, you have some flexibility here with how profound the effect is going to be. And then uh, with our uh, threshold values here, so we can see how much how much of the scene is encompassed by our effect, both the shadow and the light. It's worth noting that using this method, the uh, light threshold here is going to control sort of how much of the scene is is affected by the light. The shadow threshold will only go up as far as the light threshold. So you can even use this as a uh, two-tone shading. So if we just set the light threshold to one, that's just everything, then the shadow threshold can go, uh, can go full as well. And that basically uh, wraps up the effect. So we can see here, it's a very, very simple, uh, well, <laughs> compared to my last, uh, uh, my last cell shading material, it's quite a, quite an elegant little uh, collection of code here. I, I really, really quite like it. I thought it was definitely worth, definitely worth sharing, definitely worth, uh, worth having a bit of a chat about. So I hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, I hope you guys get some use out of a, out of a nice three tone tune shader. And many thanks to David for dropping by the Discord and sharing with us his crazy cool <laughs> three tone, three tone tune shader solution. The one thing that I will mention is this strange artifacting on flat surfaces. Uh, this this will happen when sort of values are very 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 close. Uh, you can see the dithering, uh, maybe if that comes through the through in the recording. These are things that we can't easily deal with. I mean, you can add more and more sort of finite masking to things and get rid of them. But what I would suggest is just using much higher res models. So even um, even on even on shapes like this, I mean, it's the vertices in meshes that contains the lighting data. So if you just add some subdivs, add some edge loops. Um, you might be able to smooth out some of this, some of this dithering effect here, some of these weird shading artifacts. And as a bonus, I mean, you know, Unreal Engine can handle millions and millions of polys at a time, so you probably won't see much of a performance in, uh, performance hit from, um, you know, just a, a bit of extra uh, complexity in your models. And we can see here the uh, the actual the actual material itself is only forty instructions. It's it's a very lightweight material, uh, so it's not going to it's not going to cause much of a performance hit on its own either. I mean, these mathematical calculations obviously take up much less memory than texture lookups and, and, and that sort of thing. So it should be a pretty well, uh, pretty well applicable material. I haven't tried this myself in a mobile app, uh, but a uh, few people have used my, my original cell shading uh, material and said they had some good results. So you never know, you know, give it a shot. Um, otherwise, Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for watching so much. Uh, and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.